Okay, so what is an electric strike? An electric strike is a, um, it's an access control device, basically, that's, I'm trying to break it down for you, that's activated, which is, I'll show you some here. This is an example of a, this is a scrap electric strike that we have, but it's a device that's activated whenever you enter, um, you know, the correct code or you enter a um, fingerprint that's correct or a, a badge. So usually this is tied into an access control system where you have the device that receives the credential. The credential may be a correct badge or a correct code or a correct fingerprint. Those are referred to as credentials. So uh, the device that receives the credential determines whether or not it is a valid code or whatever it may be. And if it is, it sends a signal to the electric strike to, to release, right? And I have one here, let's see. If you look at this electric strike here, see how it doesn't move? Well, whenever you enter the correct code, it'll, you'll hear it click, and then this flap will move out of the way. This one's broken, so it'll move out of the way like that. This one, see how it's not moving? So you enter the correct code, and it goes and moves out of the way. Now, just really quick to show you, electric strike replaces your standard strike on the frame. So, you know, in your door frame, you may have, you know, your latch that's latched into it. Say it's like this, right? And you're, it's latched into the hole, okay? Now, if I pull on the door, it's just gonna pull against the plate and it's not gonna open. So the, the thought is behind it is like this one, which this one's broken, so it's in the unlocked position. What would happen is it would just pull a ramp out of the hole. Now, if it was like this one, where this is another example, where it's not activated and you pull against it, it's not gonna come out at all. It's only gonna come out whenever that flap will move out of its way and allow the latch to roll up over it, basically. Now, so an electric strike is, it replaces your, your standard fixed strike, which this is your fixed strike. So they come in different sizes. So you may have a strike on your frame like this, and then your latch goes into that hole, and they're saying, hey, I wanna be able to say this wasn't a code lock, it was just a standard lever. Hey, I wanna be able to put a code on this door, but they didn't, for some reason didn't wanna buy a coded lock like this. Then we say, oh, okay, well, we just put an electric strike in the frame and put a keypad on the wall, power it up, enter the correct code, it'll release the strike, and then your standard lever will stay locked, but you can close the door and it'll lock back behind you. So uh, it has a spot so that if it's not getting power, it's gonna function just like your standard strike plate on the frame. It's not gonna do anything, it's just there. So you turn the key and you open your door, everything's gonna function normal whether it's powered or not. The only difference is that that lever is locked and you pull on it, it's locked, but it, say you had a code keypad on the wall, deep, 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 enter the code, it releases, you just pull on the lever, it'll open, and then lock behind you. And usually we all tie in or wire in a little buzzer to it so that whoever's getting, we call it buzzed in from the outside, because sometimes we'll just tie an electric strike to a little Seiko alarm receiver or something, and, and there's a receptionist, and they hit a button, and you hear bzzz, and then the strike's released, and the person outside goes, oh, I can open the door, and they pull it and open, and then it locks back. So electric strikes are used for that all the time. Receptionists wanting to buzz somebody in or daycare or whatever it may be, <clears throat> a gas station sometimes. So um, I have an example up front that I can show you also of a little wired in system. We have an access control system that's wired in in the front. And I can show you what happens when you enter a correct code and how it activates, which it basically the only thing it's gonna show you is that it goes from a stiff position like this to a mobile position where it moves out of the way. So, and these can be, there's all different shapes and sizes of these. There's a surface mount, which goes, you'd have like a, a panic bar on your door and it would just mount flat, it's long like that on the surface. And then you have, that just mounts to the surface and usually used with a panic bar. And these types here, all these different types of strikes here are all made to go in the frame. So these would literally replace the latch plate on the frame. So you take this off, cut out the hole it needs to fit into, and then recess the electric strike and run wire to it and get power. So that's what an electric strike is. Um, I can show you real quick uh, two different styles. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna, first of all, I'm gonna grab a surface mount strike. I'm gonna show you how it engages with the panic bar. And then I'm gonna take you up front and show you the whole system that's wired in, which I believe also has a surface mount strike, but it's just nailed to a board, so you can't really see how it interacts with the panic bar but I'll show you both of those so that you get the complete picture of how this functions. Okay, so this is a, a surface mount strike. 
So the difference between the other ones I was showing you, which go in a, you know, a framed door, like if this was a frame, it would recess into the door and replace that little strike plate, right? Well, this is a surface mount. So your most common are gonna be surface mounts and the ones that I just showed you, they go in the frame. Um, and they come in all different models and shapes and sizes because there's all different sizes, different sizes of cutouts in the frame for different size of uh, plates that have been there before, or maybe a wood door, wood frame, metal frame. So there's all kinds of different variations. And then usually all of these also can be switched from 24 to 12 volt with either, I'll show you, there's different pigtails and things like that. So real quick here, this is a surface mount strike. This is a Locknetics RS200. Uh, Locknetics is kind of our go-to brand actually on, on a lot of products because we're a partner with Allegiant. So let me show you this here. This is a surface mount strike. <clears throat> I'll put this on the floor. So what you would do on this, this is a panic bar. Right, a little rainy outside, but you would take this plate off. And if you notice, that latches in there, right? So you would take this off, and this would just mount on the surface. You drill a hole back here, get your wire in there, run your wire up the frame, whatever. But this would just mount right on the surface, just like that. And actually, it would go just like that, sorry. And the latch would go past it, and these would hold in place. It gets power, bzz, tire buzzer into it, it'll buzz. These will move out of the way, allowing the door to open, and it'll latch back. And you can still use a key, and the key will pull the latch out of the way and let the door open. But if you needed to use a code entry on the wall, say I put in a keypad or something, the keypad would get the right code and release and allow the door to open. So this is a surface mount electric strike. And as I said a minute ago, they usually, almost all the strikes can be do, used for 24 volt or 12 volt. And they come with both pigtails, most of them do. It says 24 volt and 12 volt on there. So it gives you two different pigtail types depending on what voltage you're gonna wire it to. And then also the Locknetics one come with spacer plates and things too. So if you need to close the distance because the panty bar is too far over, you can put the spacer plates behind it and build it out a little bit. So <clears throat> that's how these work. Uh, let me take you up front now and show you how a wired in system works and that way you can get the whole picture. All right, so um, I wanted to show you one more thing too. So on these uh, electric strikes, there's different size plates on the frame, which I mentioned a while ago, on the frame that, that this would go in place of, you take this off and then that would go in place of it. Problem is sometimes actually a job we were doing earlier today on a target, we had a special situation. So um, we had it where they had cut out a bunch of section for the special plate they had on there, which was not the plate they needed and they wanted us to put a strike in there. Well, there's a giant hole in that frame now where that old piece was at and we had to replace it. So sometimes you'll get things like this, these face plate kits and it's a giant faceplate kit. You would take off this piece right here and then mount that to it. And then that would give you a much bigger footprint to put in something. And then you can build your tabs out and mount your electric strike. So you may have to get different face plates for different sizes of, uh, of holes that are in the frame. So I just wanted to mention that also. So real quick here, I have, I have a whole system set up here, but I just want to focus here on this uh, electric strike and this keypad because this is how your normal system on the outside, you wouldn't, you wouldn't see this. You would just see your keypad, right? And then sometimes we wire in a buzz-in system to it. So I want you to hear, we have a buzzer tied into it because usually we do that, that way people know they're getting buzzed in. Uh, but this is a surface mount strike and this is a keypad. So I would come up here and this is an example of what it is. If you notice, this isn't moving, right? So your latch would be in here and if you pull it on the door, that's what it would be doing right now. But if you get buzzed in, See it moves, so you pull the door, opens, locks back into place. Now it won't open. And then you open your coat, you get your coat again, right? And now you're good to go in. Well, you could also do it. We usually tie in a system for the reception, so if they wanna buzz them in, it lets you in. So um, electric strikes are probably the most common part in an access control system. It is the most popular. Uh, we're gonna do another video describing what a maglock is um, uh, in another video this week. So you're gonna see that coming your way too. But uh, yeah, electric strikes and maglocks are the two most common uh, devices that are activated whenever you're entering a code or a fingerprint or whatever it may be. Um, so um, just wanted to make sure you got to see that. So let's go ahead and wrap this up. Okay, so let's wrap this video up. This is a electric strike. Uh, electric strikes are made to, um, when they get the signal that's good to go, it'll release the latch like that and allow you to get in, just like we said. Uh, you can use these, uh, most of these are interchangeable between 12 volt and 24 volt. They just come with two different sets of pigtails, as I showed you earlier on the surface mount strike. 
<clears throat> so you can use either voltage. You could also uh, change it from a normally open circuit, which is what it usually is, to a normally closed circuit. And there's usually most of them have an adjustment on the back. This one does not, but this is a really old one. But usually you can change a screw on the back and it changes it from a normally open circuit to a normally closed circuit. Because an electric strike is normally open. When it gets power, then it releases the flap. And when power goes away, then it stays stationary. So there are some few applications where you do need to use it as a normally closed circuit versus a normally uh, open circuit. So anyway, just wanted to touch on that. Um, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you understand a little bit more about what an electric strike is. Um, and, uh, and they're used in access control systems. And uh, if you would please hit the subscribe button and uh, hit the bell notifications. And you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn. We're on all the social media platforms and we appreciate your support.